We also had a lot of fun listening to some of the old stories the quartet men were telling about their traveling days on the road back when they were singing in the early 40s and 50s. And then we're all standing out in front of the Scott Hotel, just standing out there talking, and here comes the Rangers driving up in a long Packard with every window in the car turned up tight and them sitting inside with overcoats on. <laughs> now, this is July, you know. They, they, they went to all that trouble. They stopped outside of town and put their overcoats on just to, just to show they had air conditioning in their car. <laughs> that was funny. I, I, I'll tell you about my initiation with, uh, with the Rangers Quartet. We, uh, you know, there's a lot of thousand stories, and you can't tell what 984 of them, but then, uh, <laughs> but, uh, this one, you, this one you can't. I, I I knew the fellows and had I first met them when they organized in 1936, but I never had actually traveled with them or knew them that well, you know, personally or anything like that. And uh, when they had their car wreck in January 1951, they called me. I was living in Lubbock, Texas, and asked me if I'd come uh, join the group, and I said yeah. And they wanted me to come right away there, so. I was working with agreed for me to go without a notice, you know, and everything. So I caught a plane that afternoon, flew into Shreveport, and David Reese met me at the airport. And we went to the hospital for a few minutes, and then we went over to Vernon's and changed clothes and headed for a concert that night. I never sung a song with them in my life. And they taught me four of the songs that they knew. Uh, I'd been out of gospel music for a few years out in California playing with bands and so forth. And they taught me four songs on the way up to El Dorado, Arkansas, for, for that night to the concert. And we finished the concert that night. But Vernon said, "Jimmy, are you a, you a good driver?" I said, "Well, yeah, I think so. I think I'm a good driver." He handed me the key. Said, hey, "You want want to drive a little while?" I said, "Yeah, I'll be glad." And we left El Dorado on the way to Louisville, Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> we drove to Bowling Green that night and spent the hey, rest. You're but tonight, yeah, I drove. I drove all the way. Drove to Bowling Green. Next morning, I started handing him the car keys. He said, "Oh, you did a good job." I said, "Go ahead. That's all right." <laughs> well, I drove from Bowling Green to Louisville. We finished the program, and I offered him the keys again. No, I said, "You're doing fine." And <laughs> I, I drove from Louisville to Dyersburg, Tennessee. And every once in a while, I'd say, "What do you fellows want to drive?" They said, "Oh, you're doing fine." No, I don't. I don't like that. <laughs> and I drove in from Dyersburg. I've forgotten where the next place was. But I had been driving three nights, all night practically, and, and being up all day. I was the nearest dead I've ever been in my life. And, and I thought, well, this, this job it just it, it ain't worth this much. It, I, I can do something better than this. I know it, the job's not that, not that good. So I just pulled the car off the side of the road. And Vernon said, what are you doing? I said, well, unless some of you fellows drive, this is where we're going to spend the night. <laughs> <laughs> and then they, they all broke out, just burst and laughed, you know, said, well, we'd be glad to drive. I said, you did that, didn't say you wanted us to drive. I said, I asked if you wanted to drive. He said, oh, we don't want to drive, but said, we'd be glad to drive. <laughs> <laughs> they kidded me about that for six months. But I, I, I really drove three days and nights, man. I, I never had that broke you in before. real good. I mean, they broke me in fine. <laughs> I remember the old days. We couldn't pay for a hotel room and eat so hardly. I mean, it was rough. And some of these quartets, they think they got Daddy the told me. <laughs> he went to a church one Sunday, <laughs> and he went home with some people afterward. And he, they said, what do you want? What would you like to have to drink? And he said, I would like milk. So... The old lady of the house, she just called her little 13-year-old boy, says, go milk him some milk out of that cow out there. <laughs> and she didn't strain it. She didn't do nothing. Daddy ate that hot milk, just not like strained. <laughs> <laughs> it was wow. awful. It, it was bad days, I tell you, in spite of all yeah. we could do. We stayed nights with them. We, we ate their food. Of course, Jimmy and uh, Rex, they wouldn't do that, you know. They wouldn't stay in anybody's home. Wow. Well, they had never had to. We were so poor we had to when we started <laughs> out. I figured it'd be a couple. Of, it would be a couple of